is my distinct pleasure to, rep to bring to the stage the most controversial, the most intimidating, and the most dangerous speaker to ever hail from this region. I'm talking about none other than Susan Danger 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 Richardson. So are you guys ready to get active? Are you ready? All right. Well, what I'm going to talk to you about tonight, this information was put together by one person without any money. And we have Minnesota Hockey Mama to thank for putting this information together. All of it was done via a Freedom of Information Act. The report I'm going to present to you is the vote yes, 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 or vote yes orgasmic campaign finance report, which, which um, this has to do with the referendums. So we'll start with the first slide. Now I wanna tell you that no campaign finance reports were turned in by the vote yes committee. The last one on record that we know of is 2006, which clearly is breaking the law. They are required to put in their reports, just as we are, those of us who ran for office, 10 days before the general election or special election, and 30 days after a general or special election. Because Andrea Hockey Mama put together a Freedom of Information Act request. These people were actually, actually had to hustle to get this information together, which you can tell from this first slide. Because if you look at it, it says zero cash, zero in-kind contributions, zero the total amount received. The total cash on hand was $2,200, which they brought forward from the previous year. Um, they spent at an education conference 50 bucks. Website creation and update, $72. Flyers, $208.67. Are you kidding me? How many of you guys got a vote yes postcard in the mail? I did. I'm sure that that costs a little bit more than $207. Their Facebook creation, $40. Postcards and mailing list, $100. And lawn signs, $2,764.91. From what I understand, they purchased between six and 700 lawn signs, which most of those went up the day before the election on major routes without the permission of the owners. The next slide, this is their corrected form, submitted November 11th. If you take a look, there are three columns across. The important one is, is you will notice that their money came from special interest groups. With the exception of $200, it all came from special interest groups. Kraus Anderson gave $2,500. Kraus Anderson, of course, is uh, building the Bielenberg Sports Center um, here in Woodbury. The Principals Association, the South Washington County Principals Association specifically, they had said that originally they had given them $2,500, um, it was $2,600. Now, when you look at the rules for the Vote Yes committees, they're not allowed to use taxpayer money at all. Not a single dime can come from you. So you can imagine our shock when we took a look at this and it said the care of uh, 7362 East Point Douglas Road, Cottage Grove. That is District 833 South Washington County's district offices. That is against the law. The next big chunk, $12,200 came from the teachers union. Now this is, I am sure that if this is going on here, it's going on in every single school district. Next slide is their statement of error. Our initial starting balance was listed as $2,200 on segment one report tied or filed on October 4th. This was incorrect and should have been $2,279.09. 
since. Segment one reporting has not been corrected until now. On the segment two report, a contribution from the Principals Association was listed in the amount of $2,500, but was actually $2,600. This was reported on October 25th and corrected on October 28th, 2013. The address of the contributor was not listed on the check. Have you ever seen that before? A check without an address on it? That's kind of unusual, I would think. We reported the address as in care of District Service Center, but do, do not mean to imply that the Principals Association maintains office space at that address. We apologize for these errors and confusion or misunderstanding they may have caused. The reason why they put this forth is because our own Minnesota Hockey Mama put forth a complaint with the Office, office of Administrative Hearings. This is why they had to correct this, and they really had to hustle to do so. The next slide, let's talk about Kraus Anderson. Kraus Anderson has completed more than 200 K through 12 education projects, totaling $700 million in the past five years. Uh, building design and construction ranks Kraus Anderson number 10 in the nation in construction of K through 12 facilities. To give $2,500 because they were going to purchase land for $8 million in this school district to build a new school district, or, or excuse me, a new school. I can imagine who was going to get the bid on that. It was going to be Kraus Anderson. The next slide, let's take a look at some of their construction projects around the area. East Ridge High School, giant metropolis, looks like a college campus on 100 square acres. Bielenberg Sports Arena sits right next to uh, East Ridge High School. And the Stillwater Early Childhood Family Center in Stillwater, located in District 834. Now the next slide, we're going to take a look at what they exactly did with your money. Because two of the questions passed. The renewal question passed, and so did the $6.9 million to hire new mental health care workers. Remember we talked about that a few months ago and how it related to the bullying bill? You can take a look here and you can see that the administrators got a lot of bang for their buck out of uh, the voters here. The economic costing of the agreement, they got a raise. They got a raise, folks. 2% wage increase in year one and in year two. It also includes an increase in the district TSA annual match from $2,000 per year to $2,100 per year. Severance maximum was increased from $22,500 to $24,200. If you look at our superintendent's salary here in South Washington County, he only makes $178,000 a year. And that doesn't include his five to six hundred dollars a month that he's getting for his car. Now, let's take a look at who moved to approve this action. If you take a look, Lori Johnson, who came to this tea party and told all of you she was actually a fiscal conser conservative, was one of the people who seconded um, this pay increase. Let's take a look at the next slide, is the pay increase for teachers. The teachers union didn't get a lot of bang for their buck. For $12,200, they got a 20 cent per hour raise in year one for all classification and steps and no increase for year two. It also includes an increase in longevity pay starting in year one of the contract of 0 0.05 uh, cents per hour starting the fourth year of service not to exceed a one dollar per hour the last slide talks about the uh, health insurance changes now um, we had been told at first that the teachers would be contributing less to their health insurance and that is not true they're actually going to be contributing more um, to their health insurance um, I just want to let you know that after she uh, submitted the Office of Administrative Hearing complaint, Andrea was really harassed by the attorney for the vote yes people, and she was pretty upset. And they dismissed all of the charges that she had against them, every single one of them, even though, as you can see, most of this is fraudulent. 
And he had said, this attorney had said that in 2006, they had submitted a campaign finance report. We have yet to be able to find that. But I want to let you know the power of submitting a Freedom of Information Act request. You guys all have that power to do that. And not getting politically active right now is like sitting in your bedroom and the wall is plastered with Saks Fifth Avenue um, um, gift certificates, but you're still shopping at Goodwill. So we all need to get involved because every one of us can have an impact like this. Do you guys have any questions? Yes. So if, if I want to replicate this mm -hmm. in, in the school district area that I live in, mm -hmm. how, in terms of how do I get this information? What you would do is you would ask for the campaign finance reports, and I would ask for all of the candidates' campaign finance report, as well as the Vote Yes Committee. Now, when we first started doing Freedom of Information Act requests, they didn't have a formal process. So what we did was we just took, I took a letter down to the um, district offices with what I was requesting, and I had another sheet of paper, and I had the, the secretary who was seated at the desk sign and date and time the request so that she couldn't say that I had lost it. And then they usually called me within a few days to let me know that they had the request because they only have a certain amount of time um, to put that stuff together. If you look at the money that was spent on the Vote Yes campaign, it was more than all 17 candidates put together. The, we didn't spend nearly that much money. We didn't get that much money in contributions. They had over $17,000 given to them. Any other questions? Yes. The, uh, the information, the, the contract mm -hmm. uh, for the unions, mm -hmm. how, how was the able to get that? What we did, if you take a look at our district website, you're not going to find the union contracts. Where you're going to have to look at those is on the union website, and that's where you're going to find them. So always go to the union website, and you'll find the union contracts. Then what I want you to do is if you really want to look at the information, take a look at the first school board meeting that they had after the election, and that should have all of these things on it in terms of um, their pay raises because they had to negotiate the contracts. They were renegotiating contracts during that time. Yes? Did I hear you correctly that what is the law around use of, of public funds or resources for these vote yes campaigns. Um, is there, can you clarify that a little bit? Yep. Can they use district any resources to buy flyers or anything like that? They are not allowed to do that, and I'll read to you directly from portions of the law. There are two parts to school levy campaigns, the district informational campaign and the citizen promotional campaign. Minnesota law does not allow local school boards or superintendents to use their official positions to advocate for school levies. Consequently, Minnesota school levy campaigns are typically run by citizen activist groups. Those are usually the vote yes committees. They're not allowed to take any taxpayer monies to do so, but I guarantee you that they usually do. The goal is an informed citizenry, but to avoid the perception of impropriety and to stay within the boundaries of the law, districts must provide information about the campaign in a neutral manner, so any of the information that they sent out to you talking about the levies had to be done in a neutral manner. And that means that they are not allowed to say, this is what's going to happen to your child if this doesn't pass. And they usually put that in there every single time. District funds cannot be used to promote the election's outcome, and districts may use funds for neutral informational campaigns. So they can put together meetings, and they can hold those meetings at the school. Um, the superintendent, assistant superintendents, the principals, to let uh, voters know and people within the community know exactly why they're requesting that amount of money. All communication is considered public and the goal is to inform about the referendum, not advocate for its passage. In South Washington County, they pulled a principal off of her job and they got a substitute uh, principal in. So they were paying both the substitute principal and this principal and she was 
hired by the district to um, perform a task to push the referendum. And when I asked them what what she was accomplishing, what specific job she was doing, they said that she was putting together their PowerPoint slides. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Yes? So, if all these things are true and they are indeed against the law, mm -hmm. it seems to me like the state attorney general's office ought to become informed of that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's very difficult to get action. Anytime you are complaining to one government agency about another government agency, um, you usually don't see too much activity. That's where Andy Seelick comes in and his group of fighters. Um, they, of course, went after the Anoka Hennepin School District, and they are in the process of suing them right now for this very thing. So we have the capability to do that in South Washington County, and we're hoping to put together a group so that we can get some funding to do so. Any other questions? All right. Yes, yes. I believe, in my mind, uh, the, the guy that's in charge of 833. Um, Jacobus? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did I see him on TV advocating for the, uh, uh, for the, you know, the passage of this? I don't, you mean any television ads of any type? No, I don't. Not that. Oh, oh, he was, yeah, yes, I believe on Community Access TV, he may have been doing that. We were, we were supposed to be keeping track of exactly what's going on and collecting evidence to be used, because we have a certain amount of time where we can put things together for a lawsuit in this community to do the same thing, but the interesting thing is, is that most people in the community don't understand what's going on. They don't know where the money is coming from for the Vote Yes committees. And it's pretty clear to me that it's, it's all coming from special interest groups. If you look at Kraus Anderson, a friend of mine said she did a little check with the Secretary of State's office. Their family has their trust fund in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So they can be free of the taxes in this state, but at the same time, they want to give money to the Vote Yes campaigns to shove a referendum down our throats so that they can increase our taxes. Any other questions? Yes. Hi. Hi. What was the voter turnout for uh, school board? And the reason why I'm bringing this up is I thought it was less than 30% or 35%. And that is one thing that I would argue is that people stayed at home on an off election year mm -hmm. and didn't come out and vote against. I would say that's probably true. I'm not exactly sure how many people turned out for this election. I thought it was around nine to 10,000. It might have been a little bit more. How many um, are in the district? How many? In the school district, there are 90,000 people in our school district, in South Washington County. Registered voters? Registered voters, that's a good question. I'm not sure. He said 15% of the voters turned out. Mm -hmm. And it was a, I think it was a two to, uh, two to one margin, right? It was 66, four, and like 33 percent again, something like that. It was the final outcome. I, I watched this. I'm in 834. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? So uh, we didn't have elections, and we had one referendum or something. Your referendum was pretty huge. They had $39,000 to spend on the vote yes committee in Stillwater. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty big. Yeah. That was a lot more money than we had in this district. All right, well, yes. This, this isn't a question. Mm -hmm. This is an observation. Okay. Uh, I'm an election judge mm -hmm. in Newport. Newport, uh, Minnesota, put everything down. No, you know, on the referendum mm -hmm. all the way. But the person who got the most votes for school board was uh, Katie McAlloway Stevens. Right. The, the, I mean, she is so left. It's, it is interesting because a lot of the communities that vote down the referendum still vote for the exact same people who push the referendum down your throat anyway, which doesn't seem to make any sense to me. But, um, you know, voters don't make a lot of sense. So, anyway, thank you guys.